the sound here is incredible we haven't even gotten to the place yet it's very easy to get here just take the bus from the station Beaulieu sur mer and uh, from there it's bus number 15 just literally 10 minutes or something like that it's so fast we're gonna go to the villa now uh, people are going up already we're going I just love the, the crickets, all the sounds, it's just gorgeous, so beautiful. For this visit, we had no idea what to expect, except that it would have to be a total treat for the eyes. Why is this villa so special? Architecturally speaking, it is a marvel. The villa is built in the Rothschild taste, reminiscent of the great houses of the Italian Renaissance. Meet Baroness Beatrice de Rothschild, the daughter of Baron Alphonse de Rothschild, regent of the Banque de France and great art collector. When she was only 19, Beatrice married Maurice Epressy, a Parisian banker with Russian origins who was 15 years older than her and was friends with her parents. Unfortunately, Maurice was a big-time gambler and by 1904 he accumulated more than 12 million gold francs in debt. Worried about the future, the Rothschild family decided to sue Maurice in court. They separated in June 1904 after 21 years of marriage. Shortly after her father's death in 1905, Beatrice acquired 7 hectares of land on Cap Ferrat after completely falling in love with its natural beauty. Jacques Marcel Abortin was chosen to be the architect of the project. No less than 5 years of gigantic work was required to build incredible villa that was appropriately called Ile de France, named because of the shape of the main garden that resembles a ship's deck. The villa only became livable by the year 1912. Beatrice could imagine seeing the sea on each side of the villa, being on the edge of the steamer Ile de France of the Société Générale de Transport Maritime in homage to a memorable trip. It is said that the Baroness would sometimes request the gardeners to dress up as sailors to perfect the illusion of the world cruise she was on. As you visit the villa, you become witness to the truly exceptional taste of the Baroness. After all, money does not always guarantee good taste, but in this case, the result is more than satisfactory. At the heart of the villa is the pasture that embodies the splendors of Italian Renaissance with its columns in pink marble from Verona and vaults decorated with a Milanese motif. Above, one can see galleries with Spanish Moorish vaults lined with balconies where the musicians stood. Next is Le Grand Salon, decorated with 18th century painted woodwork partly from the Hotel Crillon in Paris. Beatrice acquired objects from the 18th century and of royal origin, including the furniture in the pure Louis XVI style, the tapestries that came from the royal Les Gobelins manufacture in Paris. The apartments of the Baroness Beatrice de Rothschild illustrate her extreme refinement. In her boudoir, the secretary known as Bonheur de Joux was tailor-made for Marie Antoinette by Jean-Henri Riezenet, one of the greatest cabinet makers of the time. The room forms an oval advance opening over the Bay of Villefranche. What a view to wake up to! Along the wall, a Louis XV to Louis XVI transition chest of drawers stamped Nicolas Petit. The Venetian bed is adorned with pink Chinese silk embroidered with flowers and birds. Vitrine in the wardrobe display 18th century costumes as well as a collection of 19th century Chinese clothes and shoes. The adjoining bathroom is a masterpiece of refinement. The woodwork painted by Lurich at the end of 18th century hides the sink and storage. The ground floor is complete with the porcelain salon. The collection brings together exceptional pieces that make it one of the most beautiful of its kind, including the celestial blue pieces in pink shades as well as a vase that belong to Madame de Pompadour. Today, the Baroness dining room is transformed into a restaurant tea room. You are welcome to make a stop here for a coffee or tea. On the upper floor, you can find the terracotta sculptures, the tapestries lounge, the small Saint-Gerie lounge with its Maison porcelain monkey orchestra and its painted woodwork attributed to Jean-Baptiste Huet, the Florentine loggia with incredible views at the base of Villefranche, Cap Ferrat and the gardens. So initially I was asking Anton why you are really just visiting this chateau. <laughs> Not in the chateau, why are we visiting this place? I wasn't expecting at all. I'm so impressed. Um, if you are in, in this region, in, if you are in Côte d'Azur, you should definitely visit this chateau. If to me it looks like chateau. Everything is just so pretty. It's just, I mean, I cannot even describe how amazing it is. I think the last time I felt this way was back in when I was in Versailles. <laughs> I don't know. The small Chinese living room, whose wall is decorated with the lacquer interior doors from the Imperial Palace in Beijing, the Louis XVI room decorated with woodwork, and the antichamber, as well as the Fragonard salon. 
As you exit the villa into the Nine Dream Gardens, you are met with the gorgeous garden of la Frances. It features a water feature that cascades down from the Temple d'Amour, largely inspired by the temple at Petit Triano in Versailles. The Spanish garden consists of a cool cave, a pergola and a canal filled with aquatic plants. We are currently in the Spanish section of the garden. One fun fact, apparently when the villa was being constructed, along with the garden and everything, it was basically first constructed as a mock-up, like a maquette. They did it out of wood and then covered it with plaster. That way they could finalize all the smallest details, the actual structure and as well decorations. The lapidary garden stages in the shade of the camphrier and the Californian cinnamon tree, bas-relief and gargoyle from civil or religious buildings. The Japanese garden that was restored in the spring of 2003. The rose garden grows at the foot of a small hexagonal temple. The exotic garden completely restored in 1987 after a very cold winter with its succulents and cacti. The villa and its gardens are classified as historical monuments since September 3, 1996. UC Villa Fruce is pretty much one of the must-see monuments in Côte d'Azur, and yet it took us several years to finally squeeze it into our insane travel schedules. After the visit, we decided to find ourselves another beach to relax at. We walked through the port of saint jean cap ferrat soaking in the warm sun, totally mesmerized by the gorgeous town and its architecture. We found yet another magnificent beach, Plage Paloma. It was perfect. I've been telling the same story from the beginning. I love this region so much. I mean, everything is just amazing. It's so picturesque. You don't get bored at all. We love this Paloma Beach, it's absolutely gorgeous and you have this amazing view over the entire Côte d'Azur and you can actually see Ez from here, if you haven't seen that episode about the village in the mountains, check it out here. It was recorded three years ago, so funny editing, but you know what, you see the village still and it's absolutely gorgeous and you can see it from here. Uh, a lot of yachts, a lot of probably millionaires, multi-millionaires, I don't know relaxing as well so it's cool all is chill love it 